There he is. Charlie Carlson cycling. <laughs> Katusha today, very chilled ride. Um, did a couple of like, they did a couple of sprints and whatever, but and some of them did some efforts, but it was pretty easy to be honest most of the day. Just cruising around Sterling. We went to True Garth and Rollers, which is good fun. They saw the finish in Uradler, and then we did the Sterling loop, which we're just coming to an end now. And then we would like decide to send the freeway. Um, the old freeway, which is a really nice descent. There's no traffic or anything, which is pretty good. I have crashed down there, um, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, it was, it's a really nice really nice descent. Pretty fast, not very technical, really. All smooth corners. There's one left hand, which is the sharp, and if, you, if you're a nutter and take it too fast, you can crash. But if you're just a bit chilled out, don't take too many risks, it's a very nice descent. So you can see Katusha Alpacine uh, are running the Canyon Bikes. Uh, this guy ahead, who I believe is Pavel Kochekov, he has uh, the ultimate uh, CF SLX, and most of the other guys, apart from Tiago Machado, I think it was, were running the Aerode SF CF SLXs. Uh, they were running Zip 404s. Uh, I think one of them, a couple might have 454s, but I'm pretty sure they're 404s. They're running the, some of them I think might have been running the new SRAM red uh, direct mounts, but I think most of them were running like the um, Shimano, Shimano ones, but just taking the label off. They're running SRAM ETAP. There's a random vegan, not sure who he is, uh, who goes flying through in some crazy cadence. Uh, and then, yeah, it was pretty, pretty chilled out. Wear some Jiro synth helmets, um, clothing's made by Katusha themselves. We uh, hardly managed a nab bottle, which is pretty beaut. Um, so yeah, they're pretty friendly guys, pretty chilled out. Didn't really like, didn't really like, knew, knew where they were going. Didn't really like have any real structured training, like mainly it was just chilling. Some of them did some efforts, like some 2040s just to warm up. I think often these guys, they have different coaches. The coaches will have different like uh, training training plans for them. So some of them this today will just be like doing some 2040s. Others it will just be like an easy recovery ride, like two and a half hours, not, nothing too crazy. But the, I mean, the team's objective was just to have, um, was just to let them see the roads and see the finishes because there's the new finish in Uradler, which they hadn't done before. Uh, so yeah, it was a very, very cruisy ride, very enjoyable. It's really good watching with the pros. Like obviously they're grinding a bit here because we're getting up to sort of like 10% and the 39.28 for 10%, if you're just cruising, it's, it's not really enough, but these guys are so fast that like, they're just tapping it out. It's not even tiring their legs. It's like if you were grinding at like 100 watts, for instance, that's sort of their level that these guys are at 100, 150 watts. Like if your cadence isn't 100, you'd be like, it's quite hard to do that because it's just such an easy intensity. So you can see going around the roundabout just about, they often rail these roundabouts here. They were doing because it was at the top of the hill. But some of the roundabouts they absolutely rail because I don't think they they like. We're obviously in in most of Europe. You drive on the right, so here they're driving on the left. So they don't know which way to look at the roundabouts. And apparently that's the theory. But anyway, it's fucking terrifying. Like really scary sometimes because they'll just go and obviously they're not going to get hit because they're at the front. But if you're at the back, like you're going to get hit. So that like car driver's going to angry at you. But anyway, that is what happens. So you can see they're all pretty confident on the bike, all like doing their hand signals, um, letting everyone know where they're going, which is pretty beaut. Uh, and so yeah, if you have any questions about riding with the pros, sock height is all pretty good. They've got, got some good sock height. I always get a lot of abuse about my sock height because I just can't be fucked to like wear longer socks or all the rest of it. It's just such an effort. But everyone else is like making sure their socks are all the right height. I guess they're pros, they need to look good. But they all just have very nice pedaling techniques. They just like put, do a lot of force on the downstroke, not much force on the upstroke. They just look so comfortable on the bike. Kachekov was a bit sketchy on the descent, not sketchy, but just like he was a bit not as comfortable as everyone else it seemed. Uh, maybe he'd had a crash recently or maybe he just had a bad experience and didn't really wanna um, risk it. So when I was riding, I, I, did, I think we all picked up on that. It was a bit weird, like around the, these corners, he's like pretty hesitant and like watching while all the other guys seem so chilled out. Like the thing is they just ride their bike so much, they descend so many roads they don't know. And they just are so confident on the bike and like they know even if they mess up a corner they'll be able to put the brakes on and survive it or like just suddenly lean over. And their like reactions on the bike in, in case someone crashes are all pretty good. So here they're probably not 100% sure where they're going, they're sort of turning left, not sure where they're going but they all, they all know what they're doing. Um, so yeah I had to unclip I think because um, that was a bit of, bit of chaos. Um, here are some local amateurs trying to keep up with the pros, um, but it's weird. People don't seem to realize that the pros don't ride that fast, like as down on the left. Like these guys, like he gets out to take a picture. He's like, wow, I rode with Katusha. It's like, mate, just join in. Like they don't care. Like as long as you're not gonna crash or like be an idiot or be a wanker and like drop them when they're doing like an easy ride and be like, oh yeah, look, I dropped them or something. Like they don't care. Like just chill out. 
Uh, and they didn't ride that fast. The descent they didn't really take. Like, I think two or three of them had a good fun on the descent and really railed it. But like most of them just can't be fucked. Like they're just like, we'll just leave it at the races because it's training. No one wants to crash in training. Like obviously sometimes they'll have little like races down the descent, but I think it's just like it's quite rare. It doesn't happen that often. And around these poles, they're all pretty confident. No one's really crashing. I mean, they all have very good technique out the saddle. I'd say amateurs often like have pretty shocking technique out the out the saddle. I'm not saying I have a good technique. I've never actually seen myself ride out the saddle. Like that's the other thing is you can tell is like if you don't have a film like a GoPro or, or just even someone filming you out the saddle, you, you you don't really know what you look like. But one thing just like from observation is just that the pros like they're really comfortable out the saddle and they just look like they could do it all day. While a lot of amateurs seem to like throw their body around or like not really just look super comfortable on it and they look look a bit awkward. But the pros definitely don't. They just um, swing the bike left to right, left to right, and keep their body pretty much completely still. It's quite funny how much they're on their phones, actually. They're all, like, on Instagram or whatever, messaging away with quite a lot, which I was, like, I guess was, they, they want to have fun. Often, I guess these rides for them are so boring as well because they're just so easy, and it's, like, there's some, I guess it's nice scenery, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, when you're doing a recovery ride, it's quite fun sometimes to get the phone out or whatever. Um, a lot of these guys use headphones, which I always think is a bit, like, weird, but I think if they know they're doing efforts, then they bring some headphones along because it just helps you a bit to go harder on the effort and helps... I guess because you're going to be on your own during the effort. They don't talk that much either. Sometimes they do. These guys were pretty friendly and they talk quite a lot of balance themselves. But I know other teams like I've ridden with have been a bit like, meh, I don't really have too much band, um, which I'm always a bit surprised about because you're like, well, these are your mates. I guess maybe if it's a, like Team Sky was a pretty young team, they haven't really met up that much and like, I don't know, they didn't seem to have great band. Um, Quick Step definitely had probably had the best band. Um, they all looked. Uh, they're having a good time. BMC probably have the shittest band because they just hate what anyone who rides with them, <laughs> which is always questionable. But, like, they're friendly guys. They, like, point out the obstacles and no one crashes and, like, all that stuff. It's really good riding with them. Uh, so you can see we're going down the freeway. I always leave a bit of a gap just because, like, you don't want to crash in the back of them. That would just be a bit awkward and <laughs> not super uh, not super good for them. And also, like, they might not let other, other guys ride with them. So you don't want to be a wanker towards them. Just be very respectful. Generally, just go, like, last guy. I think on this descent, I sort of... You could see that Kachekov was really far back, so I was like, oh, I'll go past him, should be no worries, because like, we've ridden them with, with them for a bit, but obviously, like, just be respectful, because they, they don't want you to crash or m mistime the corner and crash in front of them and cause them to either have to like slam on their brakes or whatever. But, yeah, they, they're so efficient on the bike. Like I think it's just their, their positions are quite aero, and their bikes are, bikes are obviously aero, but I think it's more the position they have, all of them, is pretty aero. So when... They just rail down descents without even pedaling. Like, none of them are pedaling now. I'm probably actually am pedaling because it's just like they they just don't, they seem to be able to conserve so much energy. It's probably just a combination of position, like bike, aerodynamics, like chain, like friction, all that stuff just adds like a couple percent. So it means on these descents, they can just like really cruise down. Uh, but obviously, when you're a pro, that's what you get. You get you get all the parts given to you for free, and like you just you you, get, you run with it. I guess you just have a nicer bike, um, which is cool. Uh, so I'm not sure what else what else we want to talk about on this one. It's um it's really good. Like if you want to ride with pros, I've made a video on it before, but um I'll probably try and link link it in the description. But just like turn turn up to Adelaide. It's pretty pretty much one of the best places I think to train with pros. Like. Calpe, they often are there. That's that's true. And um, Mallorca, they sometimes can be there. But I think Adelaide, just because they're there for such a long time beforehand, because uh, the race is such. A, so you get a bit of different camera angles. So just look on the left. This could check off. You can see it's pedaling technique is very beautiful. Um, but you, they just are here for a lot longer, so they're this is way easier to ride with them. And a lot of the guys stay afterwards. I saw Steve Morabito a couple of weeks after, or a week after Tour Down Under. He was still training here. Uh, and I saw Valgren and coming to court a couple of days before, a couple of weeks before um, Tour Down Under started uh, because they're all they, they're allowed to get here early, get some good training down. And if it's like an early season in target, it makes sense to get here earlier. Um, and allow yourself to adjust to the temperature, adjust to the riding, and get some good quality Ks in. So Kachekov's on the left here. He's uh, he's leaving a little bit of space. You can see the guys at the front sort of going. Again, more amateurs on the side of the road, a bit like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to join. And it's like, mate, just join in. It's like, as long as you know how to ride in a bunch, and like you're not an idiot, it's, it's chilled out. I think the pros can tell pretty quickly if you know how to ride a bike or not. Um, and if you don't, they'll probably tell you, like, mate, just stay back a little bit. But if they're, if you don't, if you're not an idiot and you know where you're going, then... 
<coughs> sorry about that, <coughs> then there should be all right. Um, so yeah, cheers for watching. Uh, I'll just play the rest of the vid with some tunes in the background. You can see how majestically they descend. Uh, so yeah, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next vid. I'm stuck here suffocating You can't find the time My bleeding heart won't make it Cause I don't have the time